we hear you, we, we, we trust in your opinions, and we know that you care about the Hugos, and we do too. And so we think that this is the best alternative that we could propose. Thank you. All right, a speech against Mr. Harris. Excuse me, sir, can I, get, can I get your badge for a second? Colin Harris. Um, I am actually, for the first time, having sat through however many iterations of the YA proposals, in favour of this proposal. However, I'm against it this year for one simple reason. It's already been pointed out that the name of the award has been left blank and it's been clarified that should be seen as a lesser change. However, Ms Rask also highlighted that some questions such as the exact definition of the YA and how it might be administered, given that it's not a Hugo and will not automatically be handled the same way, are not yet <coughs> finalised. I therefore foresee a problem. If we pass this now, we're potentially putting something into the Constitution which greater changes are very likely to come up next year about that codification. And I'd rather see the complete proposal than go through tortuous, uh, delayed ratifications, etc. next year. So I would be against it just for now. All right, speech in favour. I will recognise the gentleman here. Can the sergeant at arm? Yes, I'm Mike Stern. And um, I would like to make a proposal for a lesser change. We all know who the Hugo is named after. I would like to call this the Gernsback. Is there a second to the motion to amend by changing the title to the Gernsback Award? Seeing none, I will look for a speech in favor as that motion was. Mr. Barclay, are you rising for a speech in favor? Yes, I am. Uh, is no, that an amendment is by definition or was in the opposing slot. <laughs> So this is in favor. Cool. Thank you. Chris Barkley. Uh, it's been a long time coming to at least this point, and I would like to thank. Chris, can you? I would like to thank Katie Rask, Warren Buff, Dave McCarty, and all the other committee members for doing all the work they have done over the past couple of years, even when I've been absent. Uh, I would also like to thank the loyal opposition because you can never uh, learn anything from people you always agree with. And while I'm honored this is on the floor, I urge people to please vote for this. Even in an incomplete form, I believe it's the best way forward. I further urge that the members uh, be mindful that this isn't about any individual. What we do here builds legacy. We build legacies by building things, not denigrating or destroying them. We got to move forward. And I'd like to thank everybody. Thank you very much. Dr. A Dr. Adams. Dr. Andrew Adams, uh, I'm not going to actually speak to the uh, uh, substance of this proposal. I'm going to speak to the situation in which it's coming forward. Our awards are currently under attack. That includes the Campbell Award. This is not a time to be adding um, new awards, particularly ones which um, are uh, somewhat controversial within the community because they will come under attack right from their beginning. Um, whether, whether I feel this is a good award or not in the long term, I feel that this is the wrong time for us to be adding such an award because the, the griefers will simply attack it um, along with the Hugos and along with the Campbell. Um, and I think we'd be better delaying it until we have a solution to that before we, we add another award, particularly one uh, that has some controversy within the, within the community. Mr. Buff, since... Warren Buff. I asked you yesterday to help bring our awards closer to the state of the publishing art by recognizing serial, series fiction. I ask you today to bring our awards closer to the state of the art of publishing by recognizing YA fiction. I have in the past opposed YA Hugos because I don't think that they're workable. Uh, I've been vocal in that opposition, but I joined the committee because I believe we could have a Campbell-like solution that would be the best way forward for actually recognizing the great work that goes on in YA while not 
creating an administrative nightmare of which category something goes into between best novel, best novella, and a best YA book. As this proposal does satisfy those needs, I encourage you to vote for it. Mr. Olson, a speech against? Mm -hmm. uh, Mark Olson. Uh, the section about filling in the blank in this amendment being a not a greater change, am I correct that since this is not yet part of the Constitution, it cannot have any effect on le next year's business meeting and consequently is null? I believe that is correct. Okay. Um, I, I, okay. May I make a speech? What? Uh, We're again. 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 Yes, great, thank you. <laughs> the, the reason that I, I really am of two minds on this, I, as you, many of you know, I've been strongly can opposed to Mr. Olson, can you pause for, please do face the audience. We yeah. do have lip readers. I'm trying to face that part of the audience. Oh. There's a whole audience out there. You know. <laughs> uh, the, uh, I've been a, a opposed to this motion. Point of privilege, I'm trying to read the cart screen and you're standing okay. in front Sorry. Thank Why you. don't you? Okay, I, I've been opposed to this, uh, uh, to a Hugo Hugo quite strongly. I actually think this is a pretty good solution. I also believe, however, with Colin is half-baked. It's almost certainly gonna receive changes, if we pass it this year, almost certainly gonna receive changes next year, which will be a greater changes. Certainly putting in a title is a greater change. I believe that we need an entirely baked solution so we can pass it and be done with it. Speech in favor, Mr. S Actually, you haven't spoken, so I'm going to recognize. It's never tall enough for me. <laughs> I'm Kat Faber, C-A-T. Um, I, I don't understand the problem with the idea that we may have to pass a greater change <laughs> next year. If we defeat the amendment this year, it's still three years before it passes, and it might not get proposed again because people are getting kind of discouraged, I think. So I would encourage you to pass it this year. If we have to make a major change, we'll make a major change, and it'll be three years, but it's not extra time. Mr. Wallen, for, are you making a speech against? There are 20 seconds in favor. For the record, there are 20 seconds remaining in favor, and like four, four, minutes. four minutes against. Renee Walling, um, I'd rather have a fully baked solution. The greater amendment we would try to pass next year will be likely to not be as good as a fully baked solution. Mr. Stanley, for are you speech in favor? Yeah, so hustle up. Kevin Stanley. Mr. Chairman, while I am skeptical of the, of the, of the overall proposal, I encourage the members to remember that the perfect is the enemy of the good. <laughs> if, we, if we don't move forward now, I don't think we ever will move forward. Tom, Mr. Breitbart, a speech against? For the record, time in favor has virtually expired. Seth Breitbart, while I'm in favor of the I <clears throat> general idea of a young adult award, there is the problem that has been noted with this one, and therefore I move to add sunrise and sunset clauses so that we have a fully baked proposal at the time we pass and ratify it. It has a sunset. Sun, yes, I wish to add sunrise clause then. Is there a second for the motion? Does anyone wish to debate the motion or can we just vote on it? The one, year, right. one year. So the motion is to, yes. My idea, sorry, Jameson Quinn. My idea was uh, that the sunrise clause was intended to be um, made, added at the second year and not at the, at the first year. So it doesn't I, stop someone from doing it on the okay, first year. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Cronengold, for what purpose does the member rise? Um, I wish to debate the motion. Okay. Uh, 